Black History Month. Why do we have this moment every year? Well, the purpose is to focus attention on the contributions of African Americans to the United States to learn more about our history, understand the value, stories from the past, dig deeper, think larger. How did this celebration come to be? Carter G. Woodson, author and historian, whose contributions led to what we know as Black History Month. Originally known as Negro History Week, they settled on the second week in February to conceive with Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass's birthday. This inspired schools and communities nationwide to contribute to this event. In the late 1960s, it had evolved into a Black History Month. President Gerald Ford officially recognized this event in 1976. African Americans are showing their resiliency to the struggle since slavery. From the civil rights movement, voting rights, boycotts and sit-ins. Even though things didn't seem fair, people still elected to serve in the military. Units such as the Buffalo Soldiers, Tuskegee Airmen, Harlem Hellraisers, Red Ball Express, and the 6 Triple Eight Postal Unit. There are those who played a pivotal role throughout the history, such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Maya Angelou, James Baldwin, Frederick Douglass, and President Barack Obama. These are a few shown you can stand up for what's right, express yourself in various mediums, and to lead a nation into a new way forward. There are numerous contributions provided throughout history but here are two that are used on a daily basis. Dr. Shirley Jackson, whose invention such as a portable fax machine, touch tone telephones, solar cells, fiber optic cables, caller ID, and call wait. Along with, Doc, along with Gladys West, she is known for her contributions to mathematical modeling of the shape of the earth, which is used in the global positioning system, which you also know as GPS. Everyone uses these devices every day on something as simple as this. The Bacon Town community was given to Maria Bacon, who was a freed slave in 1860 by the slave owner, Mr. Dorsey. Maria Bacon then gave the land for building of the Mount Zion United Methodist Church and the Bacon Town community. St. Jacob's Lodge Number 28 was part of the Order of Benevolent Sons and Daughters of Abraham of the United States of America. The lodge was built in the early 1900s. The lodge was used as a meeting place, a graveyard, and a cornerstone of the African American community of Bacon Town. The graveyard is a resting place for hundreds of graves, including those of slaves. Many members of Mount Zion have family members who are buried in the graveyard. Throughout the years, Mount Zion has been the caretaker of the lodge and the graveyard. Every Memorial Day, the United Methodist men have a cookout for families who come to visit their family members. The lodge also served as an elementary school for African American children in the community estimated around the 1920s. The one-room schoolhouse held grades seven through eight. My, I know myself that my mom, my uncles, and many members of the Bacon Town community graduated from that school. When St. Jacob's Lodge Number 28 was disbanded, the officers and members agreed that the lodge and property should be transferred to Mount Zion because of the relationship down through the years. So in June 2022, Mount Zion United Methodist Church became the owners of the lodge and the graveyard. According to what I've been told, the house that stands across the street from Mount Zion was a slave home. My grandmother, Edna Stringfield, and my grandfather, Lonnie Stringfield, lived there. Edna Stringfield was the great, great granddaughter of Mary Elizabeth Henson, 
who was the daughter of Maria Bacon. My grandparents lived in that house until they died. As a side note, I just want to share with you, uh, if you will remember Mrs. Joan Clark, who lived in Bellsville, she was the great, great granddaughter of Mariah Bacon. Thus, the tie between the church, the community, and the lodge. Thank you. Even today, we have our own Mount Zion members who have contributed to our own history here. We have Patricia Hall, retired federal employee, Mary Gibson, Audrey Garnett, who have assisted the Lord Historical Society through interviews and webinars to help maintain accurate records. Dr. Abby Ina Mamune, Director of Maternal Fetal Medicine Services at Johns Hopkins Howard County Medical Center. Warren Parham, Black Business Entrepreneur, who had a dream that came true and has created a long-lasting legacy. We've had numerous members who have served in the armed forces in the past, present, and even those who have served even at the White House. What does the future hold? Well, we're not really sure. We have numerous bright minds that I miss. Someone might be the next great politician, inventor, content creator, or theologian. Whatever it may be, I'm sure they'll make their mark in history. Past, present, future is always our time.